Hello again, Math 10 Cs. In today's lesson, we are going to wrap up the course content, and we're going to do so once again by looking at different type of word problem where we're going to be required to construct a system of equations and solve it. And this specific type of word problem is going to deal with distance, speed, and time. To be totally honest, this type of problem is probably better reserved for a physics 20 course because you actually do need to uh, know a physics equation to solve these problems. So because you may or may not know this, depending on whether you've taken science 10 already, I'll simply tell you what the equation is. So first of all, this dumb triangle, I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, I'm not even gonna mention what its use is because I think it's, it's bad in terms of like when it is actually used. Uh, so we're gonna identify some variables. So D, is going to represent distance. T is going to represent time. And then V with an abbreviation of AVE is going to represent average speed. An equation that relates these three variables together is average speed, V average, is equal to distance divided by time. Now, that's what average speed is. It's the, the amount of distance you can cover in a specific amount of time. The units of measurement are typically meters per second, kilometers per hour, etc. Okay, so let's read the problem. <clears throat> Okay, it says a student drove the 1,245 kilometers from Edmonton to Vancouver in 16 and a half hours. Uh, this included a one hour stop in Golden and a 30 minute stop in Kamloops. They averaged 100 kilometers per hour on the divided highways and uh, 90 or, and 75 kilometers per hour on the non-divided mountainous roads. How much time did they spend on the divided highways? Okay, there's a lot of information that's being presented in this problem because we have information for distance, time, and speed. So I find the best way to deal with these problems is to construct a chart where we can actually write down all this information. So this is what my chart's going to look like. So I'm going to take the journey and I'm going to break it into two parts. So I'm going to say part of trip. And... There's basically two parts of the trip. There's the part when you're driving on the divided highway. And there's a part where you're on the non-divided highway. Okay, we'll do one more as well. well. We're also going to do the total for the trip. Now, for each of these parts, so for part one, you're on the divided highway, and part two, you're on the non-divided highway, we're going to identify distance, time, average speed. We're going to fill in as much of this information as we can. So distance, which is written in kilometers time which is in hours and my final part of the chart is going to be my average speed which is kilometers Per hour. Obviously, I could make that chart neater if I had a ruler. Okay, so let's see. First of all, it tells me the total distance of this trip is 1245 kilometers. So we're going to fill it in down here in the total. One, two, 
four, five. Okay, this journey took 16 and a half hours, but it tells me we stopped and didn't move for an hour in Golden, and we stopped and we didn't move in Kamloops for 30 minutes. I was just getting confused for a second. I'm like, why are they going through Golden? But I guess they're they're doing the route through uh, Calgary first. Anyways, uh, there's a much more efficient way to get to Vancouver from Edmonton if you just go through Jasper. Uh, all right. So it tells me the total amount of time driven is, so we're going to calculate the total total driving time. Okay, so the total driving time would be 16.5 hours. Subtract the time that you have stopped in Golden. So that's one hour. So we'll remove one hour. Okay, this is the time in Golden. And then remove the 30 minute stop in Kamloops. So 30 minutes would be 0 0.5 of an hour. Okay, and then this total driving time would then just be 15 hours. Okay, so we're gonna fill this in the chart here, 15 hours. Okay, so we got the total distance, we have the total driving time. Now it says we average 100 kilometers per hour on the divided highway. So I'm gonna write down 100 here for kilometers per hour, and then 75 kilometers per hour on the non uh, on the non-divided highway okay the mountainous roads now the problem here is uh we can only deal with two unknown variables but if you look at the table we actually have four things we don't know we don't know what the distance driven on the divided highway is we don't know the distance driven on the non-divided highway we don't know what the time is on the divided highway and we don't know what the time is on the undivided uh the non-divided highway so we're going to introduce some variables to deal with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let x equal the distance on the, the divided highway. Okay, so we're going to put this in here. And then we're going to let y be equal to the time on the divided highway. That's what the question wants us to solve, by the way. The question says, how much time did she spend on the divided highway? So if we can figure out what y is, then we have answered this question. Now, before we start doing some of the work here and dealing with the physics equation, we need to fill in like what the time on the, uh, the distance on the non-divided highway is, and we need to fill out what the time on this, uh, the, on this high, or, or the time on the non-divided highway is. Okay, so just think about like this. So if, uh, if we got a line here, so we may as well go ahead and use it. So let's say that this is Edmonton, E for Edmonton, and this is Vancouver. And this total distance is one, two, four, five. Now, let's say that from, let's say from here to here is X, okay? That's the time on, I realize this doesn't actually physically make sense because you, you kind of, you, you, you alternate a bit between like undivided and divided highways, okay? So if the total distance from Edmonton to Vancouver is 1245 and the time on a divided highway is X, what would be an expression for this missing amount here? Okay, so what's this? Well, if you take the total distance, which is 1245, and you remove this chunk where you're driving on the divided highway, this would give you the amount of time, uh, the, the distance on the non-divided highway. 
Therefore, we can actually write down the distance on the nine divided highway as an expression. It would be 12, 45, subtract X. Okay. The total distance uh, from Edmonton to Vancouver, if you remove the time on the divided highway, so if you go 1245 minus X, that's the, sorry, that if you remove the distance on the non divided or on the divided highway, uh, and you go 1245 minus X, that's the distance on the non divided highway. And you can make a similar argument for the time. So if the time on a divided highway was 15, the total time is, sorry, is Y, and the total time is 15, and the time on the non divided highway would be 15 subtract Y. Okay, now that I've got this table filled out, I'm ready to go ahead and start to uh, deal with this more from like a physics standpoint for a bit. So we're going to start off by looking at part one of the journey. Now, for part one of the journey, I'm going to write down this physics equation. V average is equal to D over T. So we'll say V average is equal to D divided by T. Now, because it's part one of the journey, I'm also going to add a subscript just to distinguish. I'm going to say V average 1, D1, and T1. Now, I'm going to replace in the place of V average, D1, and T1, all this information in the chart, okay? So what's V average one? It's 100. So we'll replace V average one with 100. What's D one? The distance on the divided highway is X. And then what's T one? The time on the divided highway? That's Y. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use substitution to solve the system in a moment. So I'm actually going to isolate for X. And the way to isolate for X is I'm just going to cross multiply and bring it up to this side. So if you do that, you would then have Y is equal to, oh, sorry, uh, not Y, it'd be X. you'd have X is equal to 100 times Y. I'm going to box this equation, and I'm going to call it equation number one. Okay, let's go to the part two. So part two is when we're on the non-divided highway. Let's write down our physics equation. So we have V average is equal to D divided by T, except we're going to add a subscript two because we're dealing with part two of the journey. And now we start to replace these variables with like the information we have in the table. Okay, so what's V average one? It's 75. What's D2? D2 is 1245 minus X. Okay, divide by T2, T2 is 15 subtract Y. Okay, I don't like this 15 minus Y in the denominator, so I'm going to get it out of there. So first of all, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the both terms in the denominator in brackets, and then I'm gonna move it up here. So if you move it up there, you would then have 75 multiplied by 15 minus Y is equal to 1245 minus X. What I'm going to do now is before I actually uh, do, uh, do the distributive property on the left-hand side, I'm now going to do a substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub X in with equation number one. So I'll even write this down. I'll say sub in equation one for X. So this equation up here, I'm going to replace X with it. So I'll replace X with 100 Y. And again, this is substitution. So substitution is you isolate for one variable in the first equation and you plug that uh, equation into the second one so now this would be well let's do the distributive property at the same time 
Okay, so let's go to the 75 times 15 and the 75 times negative y. So this would then be 75 times 15 is 1,125. Subtract 75 times negative y is negative 75y. And then this would be equal to 1245 minus and then 100y. Okay, to be able to solve this equation, I need to have the constants on one side. I need to have the, the, the y terms all on the other side. Now, I want to make y positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 100y to both sides. Add 100y to both sides. And then I'm going to subtract 1125 <clears throat> and subtract 1125. So if I do that now, I would be left with, on the left-hand side, I would have uh, 25y. And on the right-hand side, I would have 120. To solve for y now, just divide both sides of the equation by 25. So you divide by 25, divide by 25, the 25s cancel off. And then you would get y, which is the time driven on the divided highway, would be 4.8 hours. Now, I know the question doesn't ask for it, but if it also did say what is the, uh, if it wants to know what was the uh, time driven on the non-divided highway, you just have to plug in y equals 4.8 here. Or if I want to know what is the distance on the, the distance driven on the divided highway, you'd have to take y equals 4.8, and you have to sub it into this equation and figure out what x is first. And then once you figure out what x is, then you could then go and figure out what the distance driven on the non-divided highway is, because you could just go 1245 minus whatever the value of x is. Okay, let's go to one more. And like I said, I'm aware that this can be a little bit complicated just because we're, we're trying to combine like a physics concept and also a math concept into like one problem. So let's go down to the next one. Okay, so it's a small cruise boat took three hours to travel 36 meters down a river with a current. Okay, I'm just going to box this for now. So down the river with the current. Okay, on the return trip... We're going against the current. Okay, it says find the speed of the current and the, uh, and the speed of the small cruise boat in still water. Okay, I'm going to start off by drawing a picture just to make a bit of sense of this. Okay, so let's just draw a picture of the river here. Okay, we can like draw our boat. Yes, that trapezoid is a boat. Okay, so we'll say this is part one of the journey. So part one of the journey is the boat moves in this direction. So part one is, that's, a, that's with the current. Okay, and then what it does is then it changes direction and it goes, uh, it moves, uh, it moves down, the, it moves in the opposite direction. So at some point later on, it's then going to go back this way. Okay, so we can call it two against the current. Now, there's two things we don't know here. Okay. We don't know what the speed of the current is, and we don't know what the speed of the boat is. It says the speed of the boat in still water. That just means if there was no current, how fast could the boat actually go? So let's immediately identify those variables. So I'm going to say let x equal the speed of the boat. Okay, with no current. And we're 
we're going to let y be equal to the speed of the current. Okay, so let's go back to my picture now. So on my picture, the speed of the current, the current is flowing in this direction, okay? So this is my current. Current is flowing in this direction, and it has a speed that is y. So the problem we have here is we don't know what is the speed of the boat when it's moving against the current, and I don't know what the speed of the boat is when it's moving with the current. Okay, but once again, we're gonna we're gonna organize this information by creating a chart, breaking this into the different parts of the journey. Okay, so we'll say uh, part of trip. Okay, so there's two parts. There's part one when we're moving against the current. Oh, no, wait. Part one is, sorry, uh, with the current. Yeah, with the current. Actually, if we're moving with the current, the current would be in uh, this opposite direction. My bad. Yeah, current to be in this direction. Because in part one, we're moving with it. Part two, we're moving against it. Okay, so this is the current. And that's going to be y, is the speed of the current. Okay, so part one is with the current. And then part two is against the current. And we want to identify the same three things. So we'll make a little chart here. Okay, we want to identify the distance. We don't want to, and the distance here is in uh, kilometers, so distance in kilometers. We want to identify the time, which is in hours. And we want to identify the average speed, so the average. And that's in kilometers per hour. We actually are not going to be, need to make use of a total here. Okay, so it says three hours to travel 36 kilometers down the river. Okay, so in for with current, we're going to write down three here. And then the distance traveled is 36. So this boat's going to go 36 kilometers down the river. Then it's going to change course and go in the reverse direction. So when you move against the current, it's still the exact same distance. It's still 36 kilometers. Uh, the only difference is now the, the time is different, okay? And this makes total sense. If you're moving with the current, I'd expect uh, to be able to cover the same distance in a shorter amount of time compared to when you're moving against the current. Now, the problem here is we don't know what uh, your average speed is, okay? The average in kilometers per hour. So now we're going to have to make use of this with the, with the variables. Okay, here's the deal. If the boat was moving... Uh, in still water, okay, if there was no current, the boat would move just towards the right, okay? It moved towards the right with a speed of X. But if it's moving with the current, the current actually helps out its total speed. So the total speed of the boat would actually be the speed of the boat with no current plus the speed of the boat with current. So V average would be X plus Y. So the speed of the boat and the speed of the current are working together. So we add these two numbers together. Now, once we're going backwards against the current, the current is actually working against you to make your speed a little bit slower. Therefore, you'd have X subtract Y. Okay, whatever the speed of the boat is, it, you'd have to subtract the speed of the current that's now working against it. In physics 20, we refer to these as like a relative motion problem, which is actually a really tough uh, concept for students to understand. Uh, but I, I hope that that makes a little bit of sense. If we work with the current, we're going to add these two speeds together. If we work against the current, then we're going to subtract those two current or subtract those two numbers. Okay, so now let's write down our equations. So I have 
part one. So my equation is V average is equal to D over T. We'll allow the subscripts just to distinguish. So we'll say V average one equals D one over T one. So V average one would be X plus Y is equal to D one over T one would be D one is 36. And then T one is three. 36 divides evenly to three. So you get X plus Y is equal to 12. We're going to box that equation and we're going to call it equation number one. Let's go to the second part of the journey. So for part two, let's write down our average speed equation. So we have V average two is equal to D two divided by T two. Okay. The average speed for part two is the speed of the boat in still water minus the speed of the current because it's working against you. So this would be X minus Y that's V average two would be equal to D two, which is 36 divided by, uh, T2, which is four hours. So then this would give you X minus Y is equal to 36 divides evenly into four. And it does it nine times. So now you have your second equation. This is a really easy system to solve. The tough part, the really tough part is setting the equation up in the first place, okay? But now we can stack the equations and we can solve this uh, like very easily. So we'd have X plus Y is equal to 12. And then we'd have X minus Y is equal to nine. Okay, we have to solve for both X and Y. So uh, it doesn't matter whether we subtract or we add here. I'll just add the two equations together. So we add them together, it would be X plus X is two X. Y and negative Y would be zero. And then two X and, sorry, 12 and uh, nine would be 21. To solve for X, divide both sides of the equation by two. Divide two, divide two. And then I would get X is equal to, 21 divided by two would be 10.5. Okay, and again, X represents the speed of the boat if there is no current. So the speed of the boat with no current would be 10.5 kilometers per hour. Okay, and then now to get uh, Y, uh, it doesn't matter. Both these equations are equally as easy to deal with. So I'm going to sub X equals 10.5. And we'll just plug it into equation one. Okay. So that would be X plus Y is equal to 12. Uh, we're going to replace x with 10.5 replace x with 10.5 and then we'd have 10.5 plus y is equal to 12 to get y by itself we subtract 10.5 from both sides of the equation so minus 10.5 minus 10.5 and then you would get the speed of the current is y is equal to 1.5 kilometers per hour. Now, I just wanted to go back to the actual diagram and make some sense of this now, now because we actually have numerical values. So here's the idea. Uh, if the boat uh, was moving in still water, it would move with 10.5 kilometer per hour speed. If the current is 1.5 kilometers per hour, 
you'd add these two together. So basically the, the total speed of the boat would be moving with the current would be the speed of the boat if there was no current plus the speed of the boat if there was current and that would be equal to 12 kilometers per hour. So again, you add them together when they, when they work together. Now, when you're going in the reverse direction, so here, if you're the, the boat's moving at 10.5 kilometers per hour towards the right, and the current is opposing you at 1.5 kilometers per hour, you would subtract those numbers. And if you subtract those numbers, that would give me an overall speed of nine kilometers per hour, which makes sense. Okay, if the current's working with you, you go faster. So your, over, your total speed is 12 kilometers per hour. If you're going against the current and your total speed would be slower, so it'd only be nine kilometers per hour. But like I said, this concept is probably better reserved for a physics 20 course compared to a math 10 C course. All right, so to finish this off, you can practice by completing, starting on page 653, do numbers, five through seven. Now I recommend doing them in the following order, just because number five is actually quite tricky. So what I would do is I would do, so do in this order. I would do number six, then I would do number seven, then you kind of get the hang of like these distance problems. And then I would go to number five, which is a little bit more tricky to solve. And that's it for this lesson and for all of the content in the course.